Uh, the words of the leader of opposition, uh, we were able to paint a clearer picture from the ground uh, to the diplomats that visited and uh, reasserted what they've been seeing in the media and other sources of constant human rights abuse, constant disrespect and undermining of the rule of law. And uh, again, we reiterated our call uh, for action we expressed appreciation for the constant um, statements that come from the uh, United States uh, administration about the plight of Ugandans. But again, we called for farmer action uh, because what is happening in Uganda, what General Seven is doing to the people of Uganda is exactly or rather more uh, as uh, Mugabe did to the people of Zimbabwe, as Bashir did to the people of Sudan, as uh, Taylor did to the, uh, the people he was governing. Uh, all these were sanctioned. So we called for the same treatment uh, to General Museveni over the same uh, atrocities. We were asked about uh, the torture reports and uh, the dismissal of the Minister of Security of the same. I'm sure none of you is surprised by the response of the regime on torture. But being uh, members of the media, you have witnessed numerous cases of torture and uh, human rights abuse by this regime. They, of course, will not um, you know, uh, admit it, but it's clear that this constant human rights abuse, where General Museveni has numerously come out to chest thump and congratulate his soldiers for a job well done. You all remember the 18th and 19th uh, November massacre of 2020, uh, where hundreds of innocent uh, citizens, including women and children, were massacred. General Seven came out chest thumping and the like. So it is not uh, upon us to explain uh, how and why um, the Minister of Security um, denied the same, but it's clear that every culprit will make every effort to deny their culpability. Uh, the other question is a rather laughable one. Talks with the regime about what? We have made it unequivocally clear that you cannot put your boot on our neck and then say, let us talk. It is free men and women that negotiate not prisoners. All the examples that you've given, the circumstances were different. In Kenya, the opposition was not being stifled and being called for talks. You will not speak to a dictator unless when you are in a strong position to speak. We believe in dialogue. But again, we're not going to dialogue with wild animals. The regime in Uganda is clearly behaving like wild animals. Uh, it's rather laughable to talk about negotiations when our people are being abducted, tortured, and murdered on a daily, when there's absolute disrespect of human rights and the rule of law. So there is no and will be no talks when the atmosphere is continuously like that. What's next after the visit? of the diplomats. We continue to push for action, for farmer action. We've done this on international platforms, and we have to, we had to uh, take the opportunity to do the same here on ground, where there's um, 
visible evidence. We call for firmer action from the international community. We call for isolation of the regime in Uganda. We continue to call for making the rule of law, respect for democracy and human rights a precondition for cooperation with Uganda. We, con we continue to call upon um, international development partners to not be seen to associate with a clear military dictator that Museveni is. That is our position on that. My stand on the Honorable Zake's plight, I have numerously been well represented by our leaders, by the Office of the Leader of Opposition, by our parliamentary team, and our spokespersons, and I don't differ from that position. You all know, if you care to follow the law and to follow the rules of procedure in Parliament, that uh, Honorable Zakir's censure was irregular. Everything was done in uh, an illegal manner. We don't believe in illegalities, and we disagree with them. We continue to disagree with them. As far as we are concerned, the Honorable Francis Zakir is our commissioner. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim Okuva, a uh, Washington, Gabadi Wamo, ne ambassador wa United States, uh, wane Uganda. Giabazi, Okweke Nenya, Dala Okakasa, uh, Amaudi, Gabba Deva Funa, Navy Moo, Bewa Debeda Birako, Mumikutu Jamaudi, Nemikutu Mirala, uh, Kubi Bade, Birabiwa, Navy Ogerwa, Mokudini de Demeri Ubuntu, Okudini de Foga Yamateka, Nemfoga Air Democracy. Benji to be a good deco, get a lead of opposition, Wabanyo de Nae era to Zemo, Okuba Terra Comeza, no Kubawa, every one deco, every Kakasa, to be a good getter, Sibia Pa, Sibia Ambo, Wabravia Dalla. Pose that Kosesa Gunomixa, Okubasa, Okubebaza, Ola, every one deco, Namutaika, Evinja, or Viva Dengaba Fulumia, Okuvumida, Efuga Birigan, and Maso Uganda. Nene tubasama, ne tubasaba, bale me koma kubi wandi kobioka, wabula wabeu, ebi kolebwa, ebi enkala kalira. Tuba jukiza, tiba nache malida bafana nanga mseveni, ba mugabe, ba omal el bashir, ba teira, buba kola ngebi kolubero kubantu wabwe, ebi fana na nga jeno mseveni biali mukola kubana Uganda, wabao echa kolebwa. Era ne tubasaba, nti mukola emu, tuwa gala wabereu action, wabeu ebi kolebwa, ukwe, ukwe, ukwe ya ula, Kumaimu seveni, no kumusako, nati ezenja ulo. Um, Tubuzi dua kuchoku tulugunya abantu, ne minister wa security, ogena mkachiko, kedembeli obu ntu, aka parliamenti, na abie gana. Muna jukira, ntiwe tuwa nangi we nalinga chari member wa parliamenti, nalinga ntula kachiko, akedembeli obu ntu. Era tuwa ita minister wa security, na ye, ngabu edi nkola ya abwe, bogira na lujere gerero, Bage na maso ni batu gana nuku genda okuchali la the safe houses jivali watu lugu njiza abantu. Okutu lugu njiza abantu oko tekugu wanga o kucha gena maso na uluna kuluwa lero. Na ye, ngabo mmanyi ntitufugi wa kumudumu kwa mundu. Ate, abatufuga boge za lujere gerero. Teche unisa okulawa ngabe ganye evi koloberebio. Ni wangu bade muayemi seveni abakulira ye abiyo gira luatu. Muju kira bubate mula abantu. Ebi kumi nebi kumi, umwezi gwa, no, gwa novemba, enakuzo umwezi kumi na mnana, ene kumi na mwenda, umwaka gwa bili ya bili. Mwami seveni, ya vayo ni yeba zaba sikadebe, ulomu limu, gwe ya ito murunji, gwe bakola. So, chiba dechi kolewa, uh, nolulara ya vayo, na kiliza nti mutabani we mohozi, ya kulira echibi nja echi wamba abantu. Bino, bili mulu watu, ngaba na maulire mubimanyi. So, techile rife kunyo nyola, luachi minister wa mseveni, Abie gana. Oboli ya weche chibuzo, mwandi chibuzi za ye. Um, Mutubuzi za chibuzo, chenda wa nge chisekere lwa. Kwa gira ganya ni government ya mwemu seven. Njagala mu manye, guanga ni manye, na buli umuwa manye, tutukiriza, tutukiriza mkwa gira ganya nga abantu. Na emu mbera jetutambuli ramu, elimu okuwa mba abantu bafe, okutemula abantu bafe, okuta goberira, Mateka no kugali njirira. Tetusobola kogera ganya na government ya mwemu seveni. Tetusobola kuteka ngatoyo 
kubulago wafe nga tuli wansi no gama tiatetu ogere. Abantu haba ine dembe liabwe bebo gira ganya neba nabwe. So si haba sibe bebo gira ganya. Nolo insongeyo tewali uo erati wagenda kubao kugira ganya na government ya mwemu seveni. Okuleka nga tuina edembe liafe nga bana Uganda erati ogere nga abantu banansi haba itengere de. Uh, Mutubu za che chidako uluvanyuma luwe nsinkana eno uh, na abaka abavu de government ya Amerika. E chidako sobo la chiba gamanti chino oba chino. Na itu genze maso no kusaba okusaba kwe kumu kwe tusabie ngatuli mawanga gabwe, kwe tusabie ngatuli mawanga gebulaya kwe kusaba kwa fe. Tubasabie bateke mvumbo kumwe museveni kubanga biyakola bibi kolo vilu bievimu haba nache maliraba lala biba teka ke mvumbo bibakola. Tuba sabie ukuteka o akabanga wakati wabwe ni muayimu sebe ni kubabo bago beri na mfuga ya mateka. So upuli wala biruwa ngabali ni muayimu sebe ni baba angaba wagira wana che marira nubu zibwe misango muayimu sebe ni wakule mbira. Nechira tuba sabie baseo obu kwa kulizo. Ngobu kwa kulizo obu kwe kuse chitiwa mu demokrasi, kwe kuse chitiwa mfuga ya mateka, kwe kuse chitiwa mu demberi obu ndu. Ngera bebine bintu bitu gata nga international community nga abantu. Tuba sabi obwebu obu kakulizo okola gana ne government ya mwemu seven. Elatu ine subi tibajia kuwa okusaba kwa foko echitibwa. <coughs> Echisemba yo mumbu ziza uh, wenye miride ku bigena maso ku honorable zake. Uh, oku gira kubade kunjo kufa office ya leader of opposition. Okufa kuboge zibafe neba kulembeze banafe abenja ulo. Era sawa kana na birozo biyabwe. Aba ugubiri la mateka na aba ugubiri la mateka agafuga intambuza ya pali ya menti. Muna kilizganya na fe, tihonarebo zake, ba muja kuwa komisiona, mwumenye wa mateka, mwuchamu. Mwuchala anita amonge, tainza kubanti yimuru, yimuwabi, ate yimulamuzi. Mwena muamula bie, Ngalimu parliament, ngalina emotionu, echechitiwa, echobu ntubula mchandi bada akola kwekwe excusinga. So, pionabi akole dua, mwumenyi wa mateka, era tubi wakanya, era fe, erife, neriba na Uganda basingo bunji, honebo zake, ya chari komisiona wafe. Mwebali nyo, mwebali edara. They want something from you. The question is for you to determine what they want from you. Now, for us from the executive side, we are telling you, some are unfriendly. They are unfriendly to the extent of wanting a collapse of the state. They are unfriendly to the extent that they want to impose certain morals that we don't want. They are uh, for so many reasons. So that is a, 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 a tight balance. Why is it so difficult to identify wrong elements? Yes. Mr. Chairman, it's not difficult to identify wrong elements. It is just a process you must undertake carefully. The loss of a case you want you want the victim, you want the person who perpetrated the, the torture to be punished. If you do not do that investigation properly and carefully, they will walk. The easiest thing to do is to destroy a good case. So it's not difficult at all to identify the people who did these things. What is difficult is to put together a case that is ready for conviction. And that I think the DPP will be in a better place to, to think. And, and like I said, we have identified the victims and like the chairman has asked, we are going to tell you the people who are the victims, who are the perpetrators of the offenses that were committed in the cases we are compensating. Because when a person complains and says so and so of such and such a place did ABCD to me, then it goes through the process. By the time they are given the award of compensation, we know exactly who did it. And Mr. Chairman, we actually do send to the units information. About the DPP, about causing the prosecution, we are very mindful at Attorney General's Chambers of the principal under 120 of, of the DPP's office. So what we do is normally we send it to the agencies that interact with DPP directly so that we are not seen to be directing the, or interfering with the independence of the DPP in prosecution of their cases. Um, a shoot and kill of a citizen? No. If we, uh, that one I've answered, we would not want to shoot at an armed citizen or even an unarmed citizen. The best thing that could happen is to cause the arrest of that person. 
That is the, the most ideal. The realities on the ground are a bit different. Uh, Honorable Max, uh, not your comment, and, uh, and, and yes, that's what the, that process is supposed to be, that when you're doing these human rights, we want to mainstream them everywhere, so that every department is talking about human rights in its space. So it is no longer a duty of only the DPP, the police, the Minister of Justice, no. When you go to gender, they're talking about human rights, because there are human rights there. We have human rights of people with disabilities who are handled in gender. We have human rights of people... ICT now also has human rights. It's the right to have internet in somewhere in the world. So those are things. Um, honorable member from Nakaseke, progressive improvement. Are we measuring ourselves from a mean? Or you see, every comparison has to have a starting point. And the starting point is the history, where you have been, what mistakes you have made, where you have not made mistakes, what is happening. You will compare Uganda with 10 million, uh, with 10 million people having 5,000 policemen. Policing becomes different. Today, Uganda has 44 million people. We have 60,000 policemen. Our ideal need is 150 million. So criminality creeps in. So with criminality comes in, and that's what Honorable Max was saying. When you do criminality and you can't steal someone's goat, you are violating his human rights. The state has failed. The state has failed in its duty to protect your property. So it, that, that is how we progressively measure. So it's come a, it's come a long way. And it is, uh, it is done in tranches of, of systematic points. And, and the progressiveness comes even with a, with a degree of development and the needs of society. Because with development, the needs of society change. What, when we were growing up, we didn't have walls. Now we have walls everywhere. Now the child who is coming after me when they measure their human rights, their me measurement of human rights will be starting with the internet. He's not concerned about your right to life because at one point in Uganda, the right to live the next day was a measure. If you are, if you are alive after one week, then you know your human rights have been protected because it was the order of the day to die. It's not the order of the day to die. Now you can realize today a slap is the measure of what? Of human rights. Before, the measure of human rights was death. Now if they slap you, you say, my human rights have been violated. They slapped us. We didn't respond. We didn't even complain. We said, well, that's not a human right because at one point it was not. So if that's what we talk about progressiveness. Um, but, honorable members, there's an increase in criminality. And that increase in criminality is also being hidden in the complaint on human rights. We have rights now in cells where a person complains that he did not sleep well. Because the cell was developed for 50 people. Now there are 100. That's a breach of a human right. And we, we can sit here and say, if a civilian has been kept in a cell for more than 20 people, when they are supposed to be 20, must be released. That is an aspiration. We can say that. Is it realistic? Yes. Out of this number, some of them were officers. Out of the number of people who were arrested, some of them were officers. And uh, Mr. Chairman, the offenses where people have been convicted, especially in the court martial, they have been advertised in the press. But the information can be made available. The position of the commissioner is such a very, very big office, a very important one that in the wisdom of the framers of the rules of procedure and the constitution made it clear if you are to impeach or censure a member of the commission not being the leader of opposition, not being the speaker himself or herself not being those other special, I mean those other uh, uh, members if you are to impeach a commissioner of the caliber of the Honorable Zake the procedure you have to follow is well laid out, starting with the petition signed before the sergeant at arms with the, the required signatures, and it goes through various stages or processes before finally it is tabled uh, on, I mean, uh, in the plenary and the deliberation is made, and then he's called to explain himself and then a decision taken. Uh, all that was never complied with. There was an attempt by one Mapenduzi 
to come up with a petition, but that was never processed at all. Actually, it suffered stillbirth. And uh, eventually, what was presented before the, the Honorable Cartoon to commit was a totally different matter, a general inquiry about the conduct of the Honorable Bozak, but not the petition. And the rules of procedure require that the process, you can, this is why I wanted you to appreciate the importance of this process and the weight of the position of a commissioner. The censure process is akin to the one parliament has to adopt when censoring a president. That's what the rules say. The rules say you follow the process parliament has to follow the procedures just like uh, those procedures they have to follow when they are impeaching the president that's how important this office is and that's how significant this process and the rules of procedure should be so that was never to be the case because the whole process was bungled up the petition which was initially uh, commenced by the Honorable Mapenduzi, as I said, it aborted, it suffered a stillbirth, and then there was a general inquiry about the conduct of the Honorable Zake. That the tail end of the proceedings, when the, the Abdul Katun Committee had presented this report with a recommendation that the Honorable Zake should apologize, that's when they smuggled in now the petition of censure. At that particular moment, they uh, had no authority or powers whatsoever. They had no jurisdiction to deliberate on that Mapendu's petition. Rather, yes, motion, as well as the motion of one on the They smuggled in those two motions. That was a serious breach of not only the rules of procedure, but also the constitution in a number of provisions that we have cited. The other thing was about quorum. The law requires the rules of procedure ready together with Article 94 of the Constitution and the Article 88. Parliament must have a requis the requisite quorum at a time when they are taking a decision. And the requisite quorum at decision making should be a third of all members of Parliament. And a third that translates to over 180 members of parliament. But from the record, at the time of taking the decision, there were only 161. 155 voted for the motion to censure Honorable Bozake, four opposed it, and the two abstained. In the total, there were 161. That is obvious. They had no quorum. So there is no way you can take a valid decision, a valid vote in parliament when you have no quorum. In addition to that, Rule 110, Sub Rule 6 of the Rules of Procedure, read together with Article 94 of the Constitution, provided that if you are to censure a commissioner, you must have a vote of at least a half of the members of parliament who have the right to vote. I have to repeat this. If you are to censor, if you are to impeach a commissioner, if they were to legally impeach the Honorable Zake, the, the rules, that the rule which I've cited, Rule 110, Sub Rule 6, clearly states they must have at least a half of the members of parliament with the right to vote. And you all know the X7. So there are over 500 members of parliament, rather over 530 members of parliament, but the ex officials are only 27 or thereabout, meaning they needed a vote of censure. Uh, no, they needed a vote of not less than 250 members if they were to proceed legally. What they wanted to do, of course, mischievously, and rather unscrupulously, uh, is to purport to suspend 
that particular rule. But once you do that, it means you have uh, uh, denuded yourself of the mandate. You have taken away the rules, the provisions of the law that gives you the mandate to take that particular vote. So the moment they purported to suspend that particular rule, everything collapsed. Because that is the, the particular provision which empowers them, which gives them authority to conduct that vote. So you, we are asking them, and we shall be asking them before courts, under what law did they carry that vote? So finally, also rules of natural justice, which are well known, cardinal principles of natural justice, that one shall not be a judge in their own cause. In this particular case, the honorable, the right honorable speaker was the prosecutor, was the complainant, and the judge at the same time. That was a total negation of the provisions of natural justice which are well enshrined in the Bill of Rights under Chapter 4. So it was an affront, and a flagrant affront to the principle of natural justice which cannot go unchallenged. The other thing maybe I should point out in conclusion, there was also another breach they committed. Each member of the committee was given six million excruciating payment, contrary to the law. You see, there is that allowance they are entitled to. And for this particular case, I think it was for only two days. And as we talk right now, they have not been paid for those two days. The two days were not paid, but they decided to give them excruciating payment contrary to the provisions of Article 93 of the Constitution, which prohibit Parliament to charge the consolidated fund with payments which are not authorized under the law. So the six million that was given to each and every member of the committee, for lack of a better word, we construe it as a bribe. And that one we have pleaded it clearly that actually members of parliament who were given that six million took a bribe. And we are demanding that action should be taken against the members of parliament who took the six million because it was a bribe. They have their own emoluments, they have their own remuneration, and the allowances are well stipulated within the rules of procedure and practice of parliament. The six million is not provided for anywhere. It's a gracious payment. So we ask the right honorable speaker, this money, what was it meant for if it was not to bribe members of parliament to sign the majority report? And that's a matter we want to be investigated and interrogated by the constitutional court, and we shall bring all the evidence to prove our case. In a nutshell, we are seeking for orders that the decision of parliament which was made at Travaya's in total breach of the rules of procedure, in total disregard of the principles of natural justice, and in the violation of the non-derogable right to a fair hearing, should be quashed. And the speaker and whoever participated in this should be sanctioned by courts of law. Because we want this practice to be brought to a halt, to an end, where members of parliament uh, are treated as servants of the speaker. These are representatives of the people. And in this particular case, we have questioned the process on how parliament purported to bring within the realm of their jurisdiction to investigate the conduct of a member of parliament outside the scope of his employment. Because he's a member of parliament, and the rules of procedure together with the constitution places him within the arms, within the reach of parliament, 
while executing his duties. But outside that, Parliament has no business. So they accept. No. Oksokera dala njaga lo kubate gezanti parliamenti wamu nabo nabo na benyi gira mu kula banti ba kula ebi na bi na bi na ebi cham ebi tadi mu mateka nti bi na bi na bi na bi na bi ba kula ba liku test parliament e liku test ukula banga tuze wano kuagalo kulabanga tufuna constitution interpretation bintu byo nabyo nabyo byage na maso okutandikira dalala ku right honorable deputy speaker mukumo kinga mukunjo longa no kudda mu committee etai na buyinza kunonyereza kwebyo bibagamba kubanga bo bibaino ku defendinga bibaino ku defendinga bibogera uba bitufu oba si bitufu so fetuze wano si kwe defending wabula kulaba nga parliament ye defending a kwebyo bi yakola wabweru wa mateka chovola batuze mu constitutional court okulaba nga bine bintu binnyonyorwa eranga tumanyi bulunji nyo nti tugena kufuna okunnyonyorwa okulunji kubanga kine chintu badde wano no mulodi nanga manti a omuntu ne wabanga tiyagiti yakola na mateka Eni nsonga nyangu nyo kukola chi kutege ranti yari mmateka. So tuino kulange nsonga zinobwezi tezi jangeringa feje. Tuwa gale nyo kubera balo wa binding citizens. Ukulaba antibinebintu nga binebichamu. Titubileka kulikodi. Kubanga sifa wa gendo soko kubera abaka ba parliament. Sifa wa gendo kusemba yo. Ukubera wa commissioner. Obo kubera, chi, kubera mu parliament yeyo. Banja wa gendo kuja chino tuchikolera generation ne generations. Ezi gendo kuja ukulaba anga tichisigala kulikodi. Kubanga, bionavyo na bivaze nga wakula mubira wa bivade wabweru wa mateka. Ila yensu nga luachi, tuze wano, ukula wanga parliament, ngu mlodi waba gambie, eva kunsonge zitalimu makuru. Ede kunsonga, ezirimu amakuru eziga saba na Uganda. Mkoti, ukula nga hivyo bionavyo na bivakula mparlament. Biva wo. Bionavyo bivakula, biali wabweru wa mateka. Katibu bange vya li wabiru wa mmateka. Atiru wachobo li techibu zecho. Nze siri woku e defending anga wemba gambie. Nze ndi woku laba anga. Tubateka kuoda. Nga bakola. Echibateke doku laba anga bakola. Echiri mmateka. Kubanga vyo na vyo na. Bichia mungo mulabie. Ngo mungo geno kulaba kukopi zino zona ze tufayi rinze in. Ngo mungo sangu geno kutandika. Tulabenti. Buli gwa. Bana Uganda bo na. Bate gede bichia mungo. Ebi ya kula mparlamenti yeyo. Please give us a brief in English. So I want to let you know that uh, parliament and uh, the leadership of that parliament, including myself, we are on a very huge test. Because whatever was done in that parliament, in my matter, it was really wrong, illegal and constitutional. And the reason as to why we have come here, I've not come here to defend myself but parliament to defend whatever it did outside the law. Right from the beginning of the right honorable deputy speaker mocking me on the floor of parliament to the Katuntu committee that, were, that had no locus to investigate those matters that they are alleging. So it is about them to tell us the truth, what they did. Secondly, to also be put to order to arrest each and everything. So I'm here speaking to you as the Commission of Parliament. You know that hurts them so much. But I'm the one because there's a temporary injunction that we have filed in today, awaiting a panel of judges to pronounce themselves about that. So whatever was done, I want to repeat it again, was wrong. And the reason as to why we are here, it is Parliament to defend themselves, not myself.